Well, it looks like billionaire inventor Mark Cuban has found an invention, a way to get around the controversy associated with playing the national anthem before sporting events. His solution is to simply not play it at all. It, it reminds me of a, of a sensation I often get, uh, and, and that is the desire to go be able to have a, a machine that could go back in time so that I could pull historical figures from the past, bring them to the present, and have them basically see what has happened to their legacy and, uh, and, and chew, the, chew out the people responsible for it. And I really do wish I had the ability to go back in time and grab Mark Cuban's paternal grandfather and bring him forward when he was a young man, the grandfather, old enough to give Mark a sound thrashing, and basically explain to him that this country that had opened its, its gate and its heart and its opportunities to him, this country which has provided refuge for uh, Mark Cuban's paternal grandfather and Mark Cuban's father and Mark Cuban himself, and Mark Cuban has decided to spit on all of that by deciding that his uh, Dallas Mavericks are not going to play the national anthem before a sporting event. As far as I know, that's the only team in the country that is doing that, or at least doing it so far, given the climate today. I really would very, very much like to see Mark Cuban's paternal grandfather, as he came out of Ellis Island, confronted with a grandson who basically spat upon everything that his entire family had gone through. Now, they got on a boat, came over here from Russia, entered Ellis Island, and, and came into a country that welcomed them with open arms, provided them with all kinds of opportunities, including the opportunities that Mark himself used to become a billionaire. He's worth about $4 billion. He's worth about $4,000 million as a result of the United States of America, its system of governance, its system of, of uh, economic rewards and hard work and perseverance and all the rest. And he's decided on his own that his Dallas Mavericks are not going to play the national anthem because he says probably it's too controversial. He, he's in solidarity with all of the players who want to take a knee during the national anthem to protest everything that's wrong with America. It's, it's inconceivable, inconceivable that Mark Cuban could have achieved what he's achieved in life, including the ownership of a professional sports franchise anywhere else in the world. Utterly inconceivable. If Mark Cuban's family had immigrated to China, Mark Cuban would be working in an Apple factory making iPhones. And if he'd emigrated anywhere else in the world, more or less the same outcome would have happened. But he came to America, benefited from America, flourished in America, and now he's decided to spit on the entire idea of America. The national anthem is not a political statement. It's not a political party. It's not a viewpoint. It's nothing. It is a statement of the unity of the people that live under this flag. The national anthem represents the American idea, which is most clearly summarized in our national model, e pluribus unum, out of many one. People from Russia, from England, from Scotland, Scotland from Wales, people from Brazil and people from China, people from Portugal and Spain, people from Germany and Sweden and Norway, people from Asia, people from everywhere can come here, become new people, be given a chance at a fresh start and turn their lives into miracles, become absolute billionaires if they decide to work hard enough. And if they're clever enough, and if sometimes in the case of many of them, if the breaks go the right way, but it's not just luck. Mark Cuban made that happen. He rose in America. He rose in America through his own hard work and his own initiative and turned himself into the kind of figure that can buy a sports franchise and then the kind of figure that can declare that the playing of the national anthem shall not happen on his private property because America is too repugnant, apparently, for him to be able to stomach in good conscience. So I genuinely wish that I could bring back his paternal grandfather just coming out of the gates of, of Ellis Island, looking into this free future and all of this opportunity afforded to him by that flag and that national anthem and have his grandfather beat the living shit out of him, just pound him into paste on the ground. That's what I'd like to see. That's what he deserves. Now, as far as the solution to all of this goes, we're very poor at dealing with these kind of things. The left is very good at organizing boycotts and so on, and we're not good at organizing things socially because we generally are individuals. We like to be left alone. However, this morning, as I was thinking about what I wanted to say today, I had an idea that I think is a superb idea, and I think it is the perfect response to not only Mark Cuban's uh, decision, but also solves the problem. I think that at a Dallas Mavericks game, at the moment when the announcer begins to call the names of the starting roster for the Mavericks, I think the entire crowd filled with Mavericks fans, and I suspect a large number of the uh, 
opposing team audience as well, I propose that they stand up and sing the national anthem a cappella. I believe that the second that guy says the equivalent of it, ladies and gentlemen, you're Dallas Mavericks at that moment, everybody in the stadium simply stands and starts singing the national anthem. Just sing it. You don't need permission to sing it, and you don't need a band to sing it. And you certainly don't need some movie star to put 60 notes into every single syllable in the national anthem, just stand up and sing it. And the starting point should be when they announce the starting roster for the for the Dallas Mavericks. The second that happens, Mavericks fans and people from the other teams, as I say, should just rise, rise. Please rise and sing the national anthem, and you can tell Mark Cuban what he can do with his politics, with his cynicism, with his with his lack of gratitude, his lack of perspective, his lack of 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 any understanding about anything. If every single fan in the in the stadium were to stand and sing the national anthem, that would be the most perfect answer to Mark Cuban and his disgusting, disgraceful disavowal of every single part of the society that made his success possible. If every single fan did that, or if a significant number of fans did that, that would be an indication to this spoiled, rotten, rich, no good for nothing, measly, cheap little son of a bitch that he is not able to simply not play the national anthem in front of his uh in front of his basketball games because the national anthem doesn't belong to him and furthermore i'd be very 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 interested very 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 interested to know what kind of tax breaks or subsidies mark cuban may have gotten from the american people in order to advance his own personal wealth very interested in that information you might be interested, by the way, to know that Mark Cuban produced a movie back in 2006, and this one was not exactly a financial success. Mark Cuban was the money behind a film called Redacted. It was a, a vicious slur against American troops in Iraq. It was the most disgustingly anti-American and inaccurate film to come out of the Iraq war era when everybody was making anti-war films. It was by far the most grievous. The national box office for this film, which was directed by Brian De Palma, who was an A-list director way back in the day, I think the film cost him $5 million. Total worldwide box office to date is less than a million. I want to say it's $740,000, something like that. So, Mark, your anti-Americanism doesn't sell. It doesn't sell because it reeks of hypocrisy. It reeks of the of the unspeakable arrogance and 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 disrespect and lack of perspective and lack of gratitude and lack of appreciation that you personally personify. And if I had the ability to do one thing in this world, as I've said, it would be to bring your grandfather and probably your father to back into the present as young men, men young enough and strong enough and grateful enough to be in this country to have a good look at what you've done and have them pound you into the dirt with their bare fists out of the sheer rage engendered in them by this traitorous, treasonous, disgusting, disgraceful, virtue signaling, fake, false, vanity move on your part. And again, if you want to really stick it to Mark Cuban, all it takes, I am so convinced of this, all it takes to stick it to Mark Cuban is one fan in that audience, in that stadium, one fan to stand up and sing the national anthem just as they announced the Dallas Mavericks and I would be willing to bet you my life the rest of the stadium would join in and you do that every single game. If he decides then he wants to add music accompaniment to your singing of the national anthem, great. But this isn't a boycott, this is much better than that because a boycott is a, is a passive, oh we're not going to go. I don't know how effective those things are. They don't seem to care anyway. The NFL has been losing audience faster than, than, it, can, than it can run a 100-yard dash. But this would be better than a boycott. This wouldn't be just a kind of a passive, well, we're not going. This would be in your face refutation of everything that that stands for, everything that's going on in this country, everything that we're being told is the new normal. And I think it is a simple thing to do. And uh, it, it's enough to make me want to buy uh, tickets to whenever they happen to show up in Los Angeles because I would be more than delighted to go down and lead the singing of that national anthem. I guarantee you that would do it. That would be the smartest slap in the face that could be delivered to him in the world today. Since I can't actually go back and bring his grandfather and their family forward and show them what a miserable, disgraceful, disgusting, low-life billionaire bag their grandson has become.